Joining me now is Peter Navarro. He's the director of the Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy and a White House economic advisor. Peter, always great to have you on New Day. Thanks so much for Good joining us this morning. Good, Good morning, John. And, and my brother Hassan is all gloom and doom, but uh, let me give you some good news, maybe some breaking news. Uh, today, uh, we're going to have uh, who I call the 21st century Rosie the Riveter come to the White House, a real American heroine, a woman named Kim Glass. She runs the National Council of Textile Organizations. About six weeks ago, I started working with her group to repurpose uh, these factories that were making things like T-shirts into making masks and gowns. Now they're into swabs and things like that. A group's coming here to talk about all that. And, and what I see from the micro level um, is this most rapid industrial mobilization since World War II. So a lot of good things are going on in the economy okay. uh, at the micro level. Do you think Hassett is wrong? I think that from the macro perspective, I'll let Kevin, I'll let Steve Mnuchin, I'll let Larry Kudlow look at that. But you what I'm it, seeing you now, called it gloom, if you, I may. You called it gloom and doom, though. So I'm just curious if well, you're suggesting yeah. that it's too gloom and doom. I think what we need now uh, is, is optimism as we begin to try to get America back to work. And what I'm suggesting to you, John, is what I see from the micro level. I see essential industries still working. Our aerospace industry has been at work the whole time creating the defense weapons we need in order to protect ourselves. We've seen Walmart booming at this point. We've seen Amazon booming. We see the economy working in certain sectors, but we also see a lot of pain and suffering, sure. which is why we need uh, to move forward on this together. This is going to be a uh, an important next three to four months let's, to uh, see how this ramp up goes. Let's talk about the next three to four sure. months then, reminding people that there are 26 million people roughly who've lost their job in the last six weeks. Deborah Burks says that social distancing will be here throughout the summer. How realistic do you think that is? John, I think uh, based on this pandemic, uh, we're going to change our behaviors now uh, in a lot of ways permanently. When I think about social distancing, all, uh, what I think about is, is just being mindful of how viruses spread. It's keeping certain amounts of a, a distance. It's washing your hands all the time. So I, I think uh, until, to, until we get a foolproof vaccine for this and other uh, viruses, I think America is gonna change the way uh, we operate. But, but these structural changes as we move through them, I think, I've already seen this, they're gonna make us more innovative. I think they're ultimately gonna make us stronger. Uh, there's gonna be industries that rise, there's gonna be some uh, that, that decline relative to the, those other industries. But overall, I think America is gonna be strong because of the way we innovate. What industries are in trouble? Uh, well, uh, obviously the, the cruise ship industry mm -hmm. is, is certainly one. Um, uh, but, but again, I mean, if we can figure out a way to make that work, fine. Uh, but I think, you know, in terms of innovation, uh, the medical, medical sector is booming because obviously well, we have to develop vaccines and tests and masks and all sorts of medicines. So, Peter, cities and states are struggling right now. How do you feel about the call from many cities and states across the country for direct federal aid as part of the next major package? Uh, that one's above my pay grade. I'll let Mitch McConnell and Steve Mnuchin and the president uh, work all of that but you've out. Studied, think, you've studied economics for a long time. I just want to know sure, what you think. But, do they need, how much do you think but, they need this money? But it's not my lane here at the White House. I used to be a macroeconomist doing forecasts. That's not my, my place here at the White House. What, what my place is, is the supply chain. And again, from a micro level, as I look at the economy from the ground up, I'm seeing good things. That's what I can tell you, John. Okay, let's talk about the supply chain then, and let's talk about the things you're, you're focused on. How much testing, and I think you need to know the big picture before you talk about the small picture. Sure. How much testing do you think this country needs for the economy well, to open at the level that it needs to? Let me say two things there. First of all, how much they need is a Deborah Burks question, but whether or not we're able to produce the amount of tests we need, that's more in my domain. And here's what I can tell you. If we go back five weeks or so, 
uh, to the ventilator issue. People's hair were on fire. Governor Cuomo was like, we need 30,000 ventilators. And well, what have we done? Uh, we're, we're, we put a path forward now that by June, we're going to have over 100,000 ventilators produced mm -hmm. in this country. We'll have more than we need. We'll be able to export to our friends to help them out. I think the same trajectory we're seeing now in terms of testing. And don't forget, John, there's two types of testing we need to do. Yes. One is the virus testing, but also the antibodies testing. One of the things I'm very concerned about right now with the antibodies testing is we're seeing an influx of poor quality Chinese tests coming into the market, and that both threatens the American people. Why don't you people. build your own then? Why don't you build your own? Well, we are doing that, and there's there's uh, numerous companies as we speak moving through the FDA process. But my point here, John, is that that we will be able to ramp up rapidly in the testing, just as we did in ventilators. So how, uh, how, we shouldn't how get fixated on 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 where we are now. We should look to where the puck's going to be, and, and, and good things are going to happen uh, I, on that as well. Okay. But with, with a lot of other things we need. We need gowns. We need sure. gloves. We need masks. Can I just say um, uh, we need to be ready for the fall? When you say Governor Cuomo's hair was on fire on ventilators, you know who else had hair on fire in February on making sure we had enough supplies? You laugh because it's you, Peter Navarro. You In, did indeed. And, and you know those... what? We got those ventilators, John. I uh, spent okay. I spent okay. hours but, without but my point sleep is, my point working is... with twelve different companies to get those. So, but a lot know. of people early on were saying we need much more in supplies. So in terms no of question. testing, in terms of testing, had we begun what you are doing now, at the end of February, when you first uh, called for it, when you first called for it. Would we be in a better position now on testing? But that's a false assumption. Uh, we were working on testing way back then. Uh, this, the testing is a more complex uh, supply chain. It's a more complex problem than ventilators. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at General Motors. I mean, when we put the Defense Production Act on them, 17 days later, they stood up a factory, started sure. producing the first ventilators. Okay, in but, but if you had you put can't the, move quite that fast with testing. But but you, you I, I do want to make you, it clear, John, that we were working you, on that okay. uh, from 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 day one. But you could have you could have ordered swabs to be produced the first week of March. Instead of instead of waiting for the flock swabs last week, right? See, well, uh, again, let's take the swabs issue. One of one of the projects I worked on is I had Phoebe Novakovic, the CEO uh, of General Dynamics, was kind enough to take swabs, reverse engineer them, and figure out a way to, to use 3D printers to make them. And now we have waiting in the wings a Good. 300 uh, Why? Uh, 3D printer farm ready to do that. So again, what and did? we have people coming to the White House today, John, who who have helped us solve the problem uh, on, on swabs as well. So again, uh, let's just give us a little credit for seeing the problem and, and, and trying to fix the problem. Well, let's, uh, we listen, to your, let's about, listen to Larry Hogan. Let's listen to Governor sure. Larry Hogan this weekend just about the issue of testing. We spent about a month with my wife's help getting a half a million tests from uh, from South Korea, which was uh, going to save thousands of lives in our state. But I also, I'm not sure it should have been that difficult. I'm going to go through a bunch of questions with you quickly here, Peter, because we're running out of time. Sure. But why was what did Governor Hogan do wrong to not have the test that he wants today? I, I can't. I have no I, no insight into what Governor Hogan does or do, does not do. Um, I have no idea. What evidence do you have, if any, that people are inflating the mortality rate to make the president look bad? Uh, that's the first I heard of that. Not my lane, John. Next question. Okay, so you know, you see no evidence. That I, I, that's I, I, that's not even on my radar screen. Okay, the president, the president retweeted something over the weekend suggesting that people were making it seem like more people are dying or it's deadlier somehow to hurt him electorally. But you've seen no evidence of that yourself. I, I'm focused on the supply chain, John. Okay. That's the first one I've heard of that. that you, you also, you also, in the last time you were on New Day, we did have a spirited, I think, informative discussion about hydroxychloroquine, which is something you're focused on as well. I just want your take this morning on where things stand, given that the FDA put out its new guidance on Friday, warning people not to use it outside clinical trials and with hospital guidance. Sure, John. Uh, the FDA announcement was n absolutely no change in policy. We've said from the beginning that this is the decision between patients and doctors and a discussion of the risks involved are appropriate. Uh, here's the chessboard I see. We've got to date almost 40 studies which show some kind of possible therapeutic uh, or prophylactic efficacy. The, the two studies that came out last week 
one from Brazil, one from about the Veterans Affairs, uh, were both uh, poorly flawed uh, in their own ways. The Brazil study uh, used doses that were two and three times higher than the FDA recommended. The VA study was used very late stage on older people. I think, if, if I had to guess, uh, if I had to guess what the studies are going to show in, from New York and Detroit, it's going to indicate that this may work uh, to reduce viral load and length of hospital stay. The quicker you mm -hmm. give it to people early in their symptoms and the younger they are with the fewer comorbidities. Comor that would be uh, my, right. my layperson's guess. Uh, but I think what's important, John, is let's let's see what the results of those studies let's are. Wait. Let's wait for the studies. Let's we wait. have some from we'll New York. We'll have a spirit of discussion when it Absolutely. comes out. Absolutely. I did talk to William Manuel from Detroit yesterday who says he does not have any information yet. We will wait and see to hear from him. Peter Navarro, thanks so much for being with us.